welcome back. We're still with the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and International Trade, and we're focusing on international trade in the second part of our interview. Uh, tell me, how has Kenya's foreign policy shift informed our trade ties? What new markets are we looking to and why? Well, our whole foreign policy is actually based on uh, economic diplomacy, right? which is one of the key pillars of our foreign policy. Um, and every time that um, we have engaged others right, um, on any issue, um, our focus has been uh, to increase the trade volumes right, um, and especially exports out of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and so we've had very many uh, trade missions. Uh, we, every time we travel out of the country um, on a state visit led by His Excellency the President, we take a trade uh, delegation uh, with us. Um, and in two years, we were actually able to uh, double the flow of foreign investment mm -hmm. uh, into the country. Uh, you know, so um, I think much more credit uh, needs to uh, go to the leadership of, the, of this country. Uh, because there's a lot of goodwill uh, towards His Excellency, uh, the President. Uh, and therefore, whenever we engage uh, anybody, especially on economic diplomacy, the response uh, has been positive. It has been good. Um, in the last one year, we've had, I think, 15 trade delegations uh, from the UK, the US, Germany, from uh, Norway, from Sweden, from Turkey, the UAE. Nigeria, Ethiopia, you know. so um, and it's been very diverse, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a focus on one region, mm -hmm. uh, one area, um, and uh, foreign policy really depends on who leads the foreign policy. And as you know, uh, the number one, uh, the chief diplomat of this country is, is the president. And so it's important for him to be on those visits. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that uh, at least what we are seeing now uh, is that as a result of those visits. Um, uh, not only has the uh, foreign uh, investment flown in, uh, but the projects, the size of the projects, the number of projects mm. has been truly remarkable. Do you think and it's uh, remarkable to the extent that if the president was not leading some of these delegations that we wouldn't see th the same sort of growth? Oh, I think, I mean, that's, that's very obvious. It's really obvious because uh, the goodwill that is shown when a president visits Right, and whether, whether it's inbound visits by other presidents or outbound uh, visits by us, uh, you know the results are always really uh, different, very, very, very different, qualitatively different, uh, okay. because the response is, is different. Um, uh, the uh, discussions and the engagement is at a much higher level uh, than uh, with me and my counterparts, for instance, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the. Uh, that which these other um, governments and heads of state mm. uh, want to engage on, want to discuss the results that they also want to see, uh, also of a much higher, um, you know, value and, and, and quality. All right. And so it's really important, yeah. That okay. That happens. Uh, and you know, you've talked about the tr the delegations that you travel with, uh, and and uh, you know, there is the concern that that is leveled to a particular group of uh, business people and that it's not inclusive enough. How, does, how do local small businesses benefit when you're doing this international trade? Well, it's a cross-section. It's a cross-section. You must take your big businesses, but you also must take your SMEs uh, because you're not only focusing on uh, you know, uh, the big mega deals mm -hmm. right, that will be struck. Uh, you are also focusing on exchange of technology, on skills development, on capacity building, uh, on joint ventures, on uh, building our capacity to participate in regional value chains and global value chains. So you actually need everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what really dictates who goes mm -hmm. is uh, what sectors that country is good at. Um, and look, uh, just take an example, right? Just off the cuff um, uh, and look at what happens with the Indian Prime Minister mm -hmm. and look at how many visits he has made. Uh, since he came into, into power, it's truly remarkable. There's a reason for those visits. There's a reason why Prime Minister Modi uh, would want to be in the US mm -hmm. and in the UK mm -hmm. and in Germany and in France almost in one month, right? Um, you know, it's because that's the only way that you actually get these big deals right. uh, coming to your, to your countries. Because again, the decision making right, is much easier if it's at the, at mm -hmm. the head of state. 
level. Uh, uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, decisions are made very, very quickly, right? Uh, deals are, uh, you know, agreed to much more, uh, much more quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the preparation for the visit is different. Uh, the need to have a, a concrete, right, and tangible outcome uh, is also clear. Right, um, you know. So just know, you know, if you just look at how many uh, trips he has made out of the country, the Prime Minister of India, right. and compare it even to us. I mean, we fall s we we fall short by a huge margin. Wow. Okay. Um, how do small businesses engage with your ministry to capitalize on these? foreign trips and saying, look, I am an SME, I think I have the opportunity now to grow into export. How do they engage with you? Well, they engage through either KEPSA, the Chamber of Commerce, right, which is present now in all the counties, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. um, as well as the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, right? Uh, those are the umbrella organizations through which they engage with us. Uh, but the recent uh, presidential roundtable mm -hmm. came up with a wonderful idea, uh, you know, the development of a platform for SMEs. Right, so that all SMEs on this platform, and one can engage with them, uh, but also one can ma um, you know match them, mm -hmm. right, uh, with companies either in the country or outside the country that may have either similar interests or maybe wanting right mm -hmm. to develop, uh, yeah, to develop interest in that in that direction. Uh, so basically, uh, I think we're headed in the right direction, apart from the umbrella. Uh, bodies, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the establishment of a platform for SMEs. All right. L I want to shift the gears now to WTO. What is the significance of Nairobi hosting this meeting? It is the first time in Africa, but beyond that, what does Kenya stand to benefit? Well, it's historic. It's the first time. Um, I think uh, a lot of countries would have wanted to be the first countries in Africa uh, to host the World Trade Organization Ministerial uh, Conference. Mm -hmm. So that in itself, right, I think is a very major uh, accomplishment mm -hmm. uh, that we've been recognized as being mature and ready uh, to host this. But beyond that, uh, I think it's a recognition that Africa, right, is ready to engage um, and is ready to engage at that at that level. Um, we've always uh, uh, talked about Africa wanting to uh, to uh, participate effectively in the multilateral trading system. Right mm -hmm. now, this is an opportunity to do that. Uh, for us as a country, just the number of people who will be coming in, the number of activities that will be held here. Uh, but in addition to that, we have the first time um, in the country the China Roundtable being convened. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the fourth one, it's the first time in Africa, mm -hmm. and it's happening here in Kenya, 13th and 14th of December. Right. And then we have the women in business, and uh, as I mentioned to you during the break, mm -hmm. we expect the president of Liberia uh, to be here right. for both the round table and the business, women in business uh, you know, meetings. Uh, you know, so it's really big, it's mm -hmm. huge. Uh, I think we'll only understand how big it is when delegations start coming in right? Right. Um, by the 10th of December and uh, after they leave uh, and we uh, recognize the impact that actually their presence uh, has, has had on us mm -hmm. but also on the issues that would have been discussed and the fact that uh, there are not many countries that can boast uh, to having a ministerial declaration of the WTO named after them. All right. And Let, let's talk about the key issues. Uh, broadly, it's been outlined in the press that you'd be talking about agriculture, technology, and the service industry. Can you get into specifics of how that will affect Kenyan businesses? Well, for us, actually, um, uh, you know, the most important thing that's going to happen here mm -hmm. and the most important negotiation that will take place is uh, um, the one on, uh, on the LDC package. Right, uh, because that will affect very, very many African countries that are least developed countries, right? And we, they've been waiting for that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So that's the one area where we'll uh, see benefits. Again, we're surrounded by LDCs, and therefore the benefits will uh, accrue mm -hmm. uh, from just being, uh, you know, around them. Uh, the second one is the trade facilitation agreement, mm -hmm. which will enter into force in Nairobi, hopefully. Uh, we ourselves will be ratifying the uh, the trade facilitation agreement in the next, hopefully, two weeks. Um, but that should come into force here. Mm -hmm. The accession of Liberia, the accession of Afghanistan, and the recognition of the accession of Kazakhstan will also happen here. Agriculture uh, export subsidies, right, uh, will be addressed here in Nairobi. Again, it's evaded, right, mm -hmm. and has been very elusive. Uh, so at least finally, we're going to have a deal on export subsidies here, and that makes agricultural trade. Uh, much better for us and much more beneficial. What specifically uh, would you be looking at there? Well, basically uh, what it means is that um, uh, developed countries, right, will not be um, paying export 
subsidies to come to their to their uh, traders that export agricultural products mm. out of the country mm. right making their markets much more open to us but also making their uh, products not as cheap as they were in our markets yeah. and therefore not able right to distort our own local uh, markets mm -hmm. um, it, it basically makes the um, the marketplace much fairer and much more level right and for us both both here and uh, you know outside the outside the country right. um, on uh, on services we'll have the services waiver for the LDCs but I don't think that we'll go uh, beyond that in Nairobi uh, but what's interesting is that we may have some language on subsidies uh, fisheries subsidies and that is important for us uh, because we would like to fish more mm -hmm. and we would like to export more and, and you know on fishing that, that that's an interesting topic because right now we are having um, territorial integrity issues in, with countries like Somalia would you touch on that where do we stand with well them? it's only Somalia actually it's only Somalia South Sudan well, South Sudan is, uh, is, is a land boundary Somalia is the maritime boundary right um, or with uh, South Sudan there's already uh, a, a committee that's working on it actually it's a joint committee of the two of the two countries um, uh, on uh, Somalia we're also very working very very hard right uh, to uh, deal with this issue mm -hmm. um, and uh, to hopefully hopefully uh, get out of the courts and uh, negotiate uh, and negotiate like we did with Tanzania mm -hmm. um, obviously and that too was not a long time ago uh, but we were able to uh, negotiate and agree um, and uh, and then you know uh, uh, you know you know go ahead and, and, and actually implement our our agreement on the maritime boundary so we're hoping that that will happen okay. too uh, with Somalia all right and finally um, I want to focus on Paris a little bit it, for the local context there, there is the expectation that President Kibaki um, was to receive some sort of UNESCO appointment in Paris but now with the state of emergency uh, on the back of the terror attacks that took place is that still on? Well it, it's on, it's been postponed by, uh, uh, by UNESCO uh, in fact we were informed that uh, yesterday uh, by the UNESCO office itself through our ambassador to UNESCO mm -hmm. um, the director of Africa uh, I think he called all the African countries uh, that were expected to uh, send their um, either heads of state or former heads of state um, uh, because it was supposed to be a celebration, right? The nomination of uh, His Excellency President, uh, uh, former President Kibaki, mm. was supposed to be a celebration at UNESCO. Uh, but because of what happened, right, the really tragic uh, events of uh, of um, of um, uh, two days ago uh, in, in, in Paris and the declaration of a state of emergency uh, but also three days of mourning um, made it just impossible I think to mm -hmm. have a celebration at this time right. in Paris. And what specifically um, was he to be conferred with? He was going to be nominated as UNESCO's uh, envoy on water. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And which is really a big honor and privilege for us. All right. right. And I suppose we look forward to that at an appropriate time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary